Welcome back everyone to the Weekly Flare Podcast. Um, if you're watching us live, you heard us talking about our phones and stuff. And Chris, I heard on Meerkat now, I think it was on Meerkat, that you can send polls to your listeners. Really? And yeah, you can like type like poll and then like ask them a, co- a question, they can like comment yes or no. But obviously our stream is way over there. So I don't know, I could set up like a Bluetooth keyboard yeah. to it and we could do that maybe. I don't have a Bluetooth keyboard though. I can get one. You can get them actually at like Ollie's. I know, you can get them for like super cheap. Now I should look into trying to do that. Maybe we could do a poll with our live viewer in one week just just to see how it works. Also, uh, while we're talking about live streaming, Periscope now can stream um, landscape mode. So that's cool. If Meerkat would get on board with that, uh, we would do our streams um, in landscape. For the time being, um, it would just be very difficult to have one in landscape and one in portrait just because of the way we have them yeah. set up but uh meerkat get on that please meerkat's slacking i don't know they got some other stuff they're both kind of splitting apart it's cool um chris our table's kind of getting cluttered here i noticed we've we've gathered more boxes so let's talk about this first okay so this is the new moto x pure edition that i ordered because i like new phones oh my gosh um this thing look at this green lime green phone with this nice white front and this nice silver um i like it i want to activate it i went to verizon try to turn it on turns out the moto x peers are not in verizon system yet so they release a phone before well here's the thing so motorola sells these phones directly from motorola so it's an unlocked phone you can't like buy it at verizon um, you can buy like from Motorola. I think they were saying maybe you could get them like on Amazon maybe or something. But basically, it's unlocked, so you buy it straight from, from Motorola. And so before it came out, there was a lot of question of whether or not it would work on Verizon. Because this phone has all the radios in it for all four of the big carriers in the mm-hmm. U.S. So I could take the AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, Verizon. That's the radios for everything, which I think is how the iPhones are set up now also, if I remember correctly. Um, so it's really cool. So it's just the one device, does everything. You can go wherever you want. Um, so, but Verizon has a pretty bad history of not liking unlocked phones. Mm. Like when the Nexus came out, for instance, they were like, this is a pain. If you wanted to use it, you had to have an activated SIM card and then swap it into the, ne- the Nexus. And I thought, great, that's going to be the same situation with this, which wouldn't be a problem, except for I haven't been on Verizon for the last year and a half. Yeah. So I don't have an already activated SIM card. Well, the good news is, um, Droid Life reached out to Verizon and said, hey, a lot of people are having issues activating their Moto Xs, saying that they can't activate them. It turns out they just, it's a problem in the system, just not recognizing the phone's um, IMEI number, which is just basically its product number. Okay. So Verizon's working on it, said there should be a fix by Friday the 18th. So hopefully this weekend I'll be able to just walk into the Verizon store and activate my phone. Otherwise, when Rachel's iPhone gets here, I'm going to use her current iPhone 5C, activate a SIM card, and then put it in my phone. Hopefully I don't have to do that though. But man, this thing is huge. I mean, look at this. It is. It's massive. It's like a 5.7 inch screen. Do the colors, what colors do they come with? So, um, the back has like, a, there's a ton of colors you can do. You can do like grays, whites, yellows, black, the green, there's like a dark, like navy blue color. Um, but then you can get like a wood back and get like bamboo or like, um, there's some other like woods you can get, or you can get a leather back. So these are speakers. Yeah. So there's speakers, they're both the speakers are on the front. Okay. So your speakers are front facing. Um, it's got a front-facing flash. Oh, that's nuts. So that's instead nice. of having the screen just flash at you, it's actually a, a dedicated flash on there. And the only thing it doesn't have, it doesn't have a fingerprint scanner. Mm. So there's no fingerprint scanning, um, which which is a bummer. Um, but it's not terrible. I don't I don't know if it's something I really need, but it is a bummer that it doesn't have it. I do like that a lot, actually. It's um, nice. It's a little bigger than I wanted, but I've been really happy with the Moto X line so far. Oh yeah, that's that what you I was to willing to give it a try. And like I said, if it's if I don't like it, 
next year I'll just get a smaller phone again. It's it's the same size as an iPhone 6 Plus. Yeah, it's the 5.7 inch screen, mm -hmm. so... How do you like that? It's, it's kind of ridiculously big, but I'm really excited to get it activated and start messing around with it. Um, it should be getting the new version of Android 6.0, which is Marshmallow. They don't, I don't know when, but it said it's this coming. Oh, speaking of Android updates, the first gen Moto X, which came out in 2013, um, is set to get the Lollipop update on Verizon, which um, is good for Motorola because people are giving them a really hard time about not updating their phones, mm -hmm. which I haven't found that to be an issue with them, but apparently some people have. So if you're still using a first gen Moto X, and you're on Verizon, a lollipop is coming. So that's Android 5, mm -hmm. uh, 5 1, I believe, 5 0, 5 1, something like that. It's coming. So have no fear, Verizon is getting better about rolling out these updates in a more timely fashion. iPhone, uh, speaking of. Oh, speaking of iPhone updates. Uh, the iOS 9 came out. Yes, it did. Um, there's some minor differences. I've only had it for about five hours. Four or five hours, so I probably yes. there's some things that are, are backwards. Um, I I need to update my iPod tonight. Yeah, no, there's but the thing is, I think our, I think we talked about it last week. Is the main difference is going to be on your 6s. Yeah, a lot of the big changes you're not going to uh, notice unless you buy a new 6s because you're like you're not going to get 3D touch, which is like the biggest yeah, that's new the, thing. That's a new thing. Uh, I think. If you have an iPad, though, you'll still get side-by-side -side viewing on all the iPads. That'd be nice. But I don't think any of the phones have that, though, just because the screen doesn't exactly. make sense. Um, now, the good thing about it is that 4, 4S did not, was not able to move to 8. Mm -hmm. um, so that but means... It should be able to move to 9 now, is what I heard, right? It should be able to move to 9. Um, it, it will be a little slow and is a that little because, laggy. Is that because 9 has a better job of compressing the uh, files. I think so. I heard 9, well, the biggest advantage you're going to get on an old phone is it's much better at compressing mm -hmm. apps and like, just the overall file size of the OS. Yes. Um, I think I also read that the battery life is going to be a little bit better. Um, but I think... Well, they said that was every update. That was everything. I think the only major thing that we're going to be running into is speed. Yeah, you're um, gonna see a speed hit probably. You're gonna see a speed hit problem. I think they went from like 35 seconds boot up, boot up to 42. Wow, um, that's on older devices. I believe so. What did you see that on your phone? Have you I did. I haven't yet? noticed anything. I didn't. I but didn't. you have a 5s now, right? I've got a six. Oh, you have a six now. Okay. Um, I did notice a little something when I did first download it was uh, the Wi-Fi was moving a little slow. Mm -hmm slower than usual so i have a feeling it might have been just trying to that could have just been an internet it compatible. too though it could have been making it trying to make it compatible um it could have just been redoing your security say exactly. there's a lot of things that could have caused that other than just that. the phone um i think the one issue i think iphone has actually made a mistake of is it didn't reset a lot of stuff on my phone but what it ran into was um what had happened was uh like, I, I set my screen to a certain uh, locking time, so I think it said, you know, lock after a minute or two. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we're looking right now, it, <clears throat> I think it reset it to like 15 seconds. Um, so I don't know what's going on with that, I'm going to have to go through some of my stuff to re-customize it, which is not a big deal, but it's just kind of annoying at times. Tech feed just sent us a thing on Meerkat. Said the most noticeable difference is the change to the task switcher when you double click the home button. That is one of the biggest issues. It's completely flipped. Yes, it is different. Um, it's completely flipped, which I don't really care for it. I would have liked it if it was how it originally was, like that, but it went that way. I don't know. Um, I kind of like the way that they stack on each other now instead of just being I mean, side by side. I do like the stacking, but I think they should have put it on the other side like they used to. But now it's flipped. That was what I was talking about, the flip. But now you can just swipe up and close out. We could do that before. Thank yeah. you, TechFeed. I did not know that they had switched that. That is um, that is noticeable. Yes. I like that. I like the way they look much better now. Exactly. I actually love that we can actually talk to somebody. So, yeah, someone's know. talking to us. That's great. Finally, Thank you. That's pretty cool. We should actually consider talking to them later on and maybe getting some more ideas on what we should talk about. We should. You know what else we should do? We should probably move on to our other story. Okay. We talked about this for 10 minutes now. Talking about phones. It's a big deal. Phones are a big deal. And they're kind of big. So, 
Um, Chris, do you like movies? I do. Do you like zombie movies? I do. Okay. Well, what if I told you that some refugees from that were refugees from the Congo, the Dominican Republic of the Congo, got sent some stuff that um, helped them make some zombie movies. So basically, they got sent like this whole kit that has like, a bunch of tablets and e-readers to the refugee camp that they're at, and uh, this guy and some of his friends, they're like, hey, they got this group together, and they wanted to kind of make something to help like other people like in the camp get over like the trauma and some of the stuff that they've been dealing with from escaping from the Congo and just some of the stuff even in the camp that they've been seeing again from the different ethnic groups. So what they did was they took some of the cameras and some of the stuff and they never made a movie. They've actually never actually seen even a zombie movie, it sounded like. But they took all the stuff they had and they took basically um, some of the, like, the biggest struggles that they faced and basically used those, turned them into like the zombies mm -hmm. and just made this like short 15 minute film um, kind of just showing all the problems and the struggles and stuff that they've had. And it's basically faced, based around like these like child ghost zombies that represent people who died and then like the two people in it that aren't dead are supposed to be like they were like two of the guys I didn't quite get the connection because mm. it's kind of it was long it was kind of hard to follow but they were like supposed to be like paying for all this stuff that happened or something like that it's pretty interesting um like I said it's not like the best zombie movie you're ever going to see probably but considering what they had to work with and that they never oh, made a movie oh they never touched anything like it that they did this thing that they're trying to help other people in this refugee camp that they're in it's pretty cool mm -hmm. um, we're definitely going to have a link in the show notes because like I said it is it's pretty cool. pretty sweet it was pretty sweet um but yeah it was really cool and I think you guys should go check it out so Chris that was a short story it went from really long to really yeah. short um there's one other thing on this show that we have a big problem talking about what's that amoeba we do so I had this Dr. Mario amoeba sitting in front of us the whole show um I found out on the way back from Florida last weekend so we went down to Florida to watch some concerts and I, we stopped by Target because we had to make a stop. And we was like, okay, we'll go to this Target, go to the bathroom, get a drink. And I was like, well, let's just go check the Amiibo real quick. Because you know, I knew some new ones came out over the weekend while I was out of town. I was like, well, let's just go check, see what happens. They had two Dr. Mario's left. So I got one. So I was like, okay, well, I don't have Dr. Mario yet. I decided that instead of importing everything on release day like I did the last wave, which was great. It was awesome because I had them all. This wave, I decided I'm going to wait, see if I can find any in the store. And then in a month or so, if I still haven't found any, then I'm just going to order the rest on okay. um, Mostly because it's just fun when we, me, and, me and my wife, we go to the store, we look for them. It's just a lot of fun. So I decided this wave, I'll hold off on ordering them all up front and we'll wait, see which ones we can find in the store first. It's kind of fun to go around looking for them. And then if I can't find them all, I'll just go ahead and buy them all online. So here we go. We've now added Dr. Mario to the set. To the knife. I was just hoping not to show. It's kind of boring for the listeners only to walk. Here we go. <laughs> but yeah, so we've added Dr. Mario. All I'm missing now from this set is... Olmore, I believe. And Zero Suit Samus. And Bowser Jr. So there's still a few I'm missing, actually. And then I think if I do that... Um, I'm, I'm pretty close to having all the ones that are out right now. There's like a few odd ones I don't have, but I'm pretty close now. Okay. Of course, then, there's the Super Mario set's almost complete. So, the Super Mario set's almost done, and then after that I'll have to see if I keep going or not. I probably will, because, well, I've already started, and it's, it's pretty fun. I like them. They're happy. We're going to get more shelves. Yeah, I don't know. The shelf space is running out quick, but that's okay. Chris, what'd you do this weekend? What I did this weekend, I went to the beach. How was um, that? It was good. We got there about 8 o'clock Friday night, uh, bought some groceries, got up in the morning way before everyone else and went for a run. Me, I guess I, I got to run for class, which was... Yeah, you have to run. It was more enjoyable than running at home because running on the beach is actually hard. Mm-hmm. You know, it's different. It's 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, you know, no one's up, or there's other people, the only people that are out there running. Yeah. 
Oh, um, it's the beach. Some people that get up early, I to go running or to watch the sun. Exactly. Uh, then that happened, and then I can say, I think Saturday, I went out on the beach, and it rained. Nice. Always um, nice rain on the beach. It, 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 was, it wasn't like heavy rain, but it was decent, and you know, but I could still get in the water. And the water was really nice and warm. Uh, and then I ended up cooking on Saturday night, so I made chicken fajita burritos. Nice. Which was no shark attack? Nothing. You didn't see any shark? Nothing. That's good. It was calm, peaceful, and I gotta say, man, I everyone was actually pretty pleased with what I cooked, and I was actually surprised that it came out the way it did. Well, that's good. Did you have some friends? Yeah, about 10 of us went down there. That's um, a lot of friends. Yeah, went down there and enjoyed it. Free house, you know, and it was really enjoyable. Uh, and then I came back Sunday and... You know, did the whole work thing again. Yeah, so. you gotta do that work thing, you know, so that way you can go to the beach again, right? Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Well, like I said, I just went down to Florida and saw some concerts and then drove back. And then Friday we're gonna go see Night Ranger play at the fair. And then in a few weeks we're going back down to Florida for some more concerts. Wow. Yeah. Who's uh, playing? A 38 special and um, some other guy. I should know. What is that? It's the like the second weekend in October. Okay. So, good times, yeah. good times. All right, Chris, do you have anything you want to plug this week before no. we get out out of here? I, I think that was pretty good. You don't have anything at all? Nothing. 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 Okay. Well, I don't. I won't plug anything either then. Um, but you should check out the Weekly Flare at theweeklyflare.com or on Twitter at the Weekly Flare. Facebook at the Weekly Flare, and I think I'm gonna get the YouTube up this week. I'm gonna get back on the YouTube now. Okay. So this week's episode will be on YouTube, and if you look for the past ones yet, yeah, there's a gap. I'm sorry. There's a gap in there's the YouTube. It's just a big gap. I'm sorry. But we're going to get back on the YouTube now. YouTube will be back up and going. Um, I have some ideas. So the YouTube video should be getting better. Um, of course, if you want to follow me, um, you can follow me on Twitter at James Walter. You can follow Chris on Twitter at Never Lose Heart. You can... Follow all the interesting stuff we talk about and not so interesting stuff we talk about. You can see me complain about not being able to activate my phone. And you can see Chris still post song lyrics. I don't really know what you're doing on Twitter these days. No, nothing really. You're mostly working, so. Yeah, I don't have time. You don't have time for that Twitter anymore. And I only have time for the Twitter at night. Yep. So, yeah. So, thanks for watching, everyone. We hope you'll come back and join us again next week. And, uh. Happy week. Awesome. Peace.